Hi guys, so I've built myself a mutton farm here. As you can see, what I've done is it's five foundations long. Uh, it's 10 OVs, two males, eight females. And what I've done is I've got two OVs per uh, foundation, as you can see there. Um, and now this just allows me to have one male that is breeding with four, four females potentially at the same time. Now you can set them all to breed at the same time. I don't like to do that because I like to have the babies drop sort of one after the other. So you see this is one of the males here. Obviously two along is another female that needs to be rid of him. There we go. And I can just leave them there to mate. So that's nice and easy. Now what I have done with this is I have built it on top of a set of foundations down here that I've put a wall and door around. Here we go. The reason for this is I find with OVs they tend to drop their babies under whatever level they're on. So originally I did try building this on the floor and the problem that I had was that the ovaries would drop their babies like literally underneath the ground here. Now if you do have access to admin commands, uh, the way to do that is to, if you're on single player, you don't need to type the cheat in, but I'm just doing cheap ghost. Um, and what you would need to do is just ghost underneath here Try not to hit the water. Uh, obviously, if you're not near a water source, you're kind of boned. Um, but you'd go underneath here and then grab the baby. And then what you would need to do is go out to the point where, get the baby to follow you to the point where you're outside. So what I would do, I would do this. Uh, so you, you're outside the actual ground and there's water. Now the baby would follow me out here and then it would be swimming. And what I could do was I could then just get that to the baby to work normally. So if you do get your ovaries dropped below the ground, that's the way you need to do it. If you don't have admin commands, I'm afraid you're kind of boned there. Make sure you make sure wherever you're breeding them, it's above an area where the babies can potentially drop down to. Right, these two are about to finish mating here. Um, and let me just... Wait for that to finish. Woohoo! Right, there we go. So now what I can do is I can say disable wandering. Now I know that um, <clears throat> when talking to other people, they like to just leave their ovaries wandering and mating or have them mating all the time. That is obviously something you might want to do. It's just that as you can see, what I've done with mine is they are going to be dropping in an order and I'll be able to get them. Now what I like about this system that I've done here is if they do drop the babies down, um, the babies drop inside here. So say I miss them, uh, miss actually picking up the babies, I tend to be able to just come along and pick them up from there, which is kind of cool. Um, very rarely they do drop them actually on the platform here. Most of the time though, they seem to drop them below the platform. I don't know what's going on with that. That's something that needs to be fixed, obviously. Um, yeah, so this is, like I said, 10 OVs here. Now, when it comes to actually farming the mutton from them, um, what you do is you just take any weapon that you can kill uh, or you'd be able to harvest meat with. And all you do is you go up to an OV and you just, you hold that slaughter thing there. That doesn't come up, as you can see, if you don't have a weapon in your hand. Once you do, you can slaughter the OV. Oh, let's do that again. There we go. Um, you can do that again. Sometimes, as you can see there, um, if you if you don't have a weapon out, and then pull out a weapon. Oh, okay. can't, I can't replicate the glitch. But basically, if you're not getting that sort of thing come up, just move a little bit and then go back to them. So that's the principle of how that works there. Um, I'm just gonna quickly show you how I built that. Right, so what I did was I just built out five foundations like this. So one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and then what I did was I built up the walls around with a doorway. Right, so I built 11 walls around there, then put the doorway on. I'm not going to put the doorway on just so you can actually see what's going underneath. Then I built the ceilings on top. Right, so I built the ceilings actually from the inside, just to make sure they do actually snap properly. There we go. Uh, threw another ceiling out the top here, at right, the back here, and threw a ramp on. Right, there's the ramp. Um, and now what I did, so I actually, obviously I added the walkway around the outside afterwards. Um, and then what I did was, I'm just gonna show you a, an example of this. Um, just to make sure it all snapped nicely, 
and it was all together. Um, I built these here, so, so I didn't put the other ceilings on first, just to make sure I didn't really have any issues with it. Now, I do find that sometimes when you're doing this, uh, what I'm pressing here is the Q button to make sure it actually snaps as wide as possible there. Sometimes it will go fine, sometimes it won't. There you go, just press the Q button. Uh, snap that in there, like that, okay. And then these ones are can be a little bit finicky to snap in. There we go. And then I just, um, on each of these horizontal ones, I put railings. As you see, the railings do actually snap on quite nicely. There we go. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Says they snap on nicely and they didn't snap on nicely. I just did all this all the way back for all, f uh, all five of these seedings. Um, and at that point then, I just built the, the area around it. I took each OV in and faced them in, as you can see, and then just threw a door on the back of it. Um, the reason I've got the door on the back is just because if they do kind of glitch out or anything, um, it's not too much of a problem to get out of them, so I can just sort of jump off and get out quite easily. Um, I would say you don't really want to leave them on Wanda if you're going to have them as packed in like this. Um, it's not so much of an issue if you're around they won't be able to get out that you know they can't get out of this structure but if you go to the point where things de-render um, then you tend to have a problem with them actually just glitching through the structure which is obviously you don't want to leave them on wonder if that's going to happen which is why i uh, tend to go through and actually just sort of turn them all off of wonder and that's really all it is and once you've done that um, and you've got them all positioned inside there you are ready to just sort of let them go at it. Just sort of you know, do it one at a time, or you can do uh, all five per all five at the same time, um, or you can just set them all to wander, and they would all breed out and then take the wandering off. It's up to you, whichever way you want to do it. Personally, I do it in order, just so I know when the babies are going to drop. Um, and yeah, that was it. Uh, that is a fairly effective way to get these guys to breed out. Uh, when the babies are born, I will show you them dropping down underneath here. Like I say, they don't always drop down. Sometimes they will land out on this area here, but most of the time they have actually been dropping down underneath, uh, which is having this little catcher down the bottom has made life a lot easier for me. Um, okay, right. So uh, once the babies are born, I'll bring the video back in. Okay, guys, so the babies are starting to drop, and of the four that have been born so far, three of them dropped down underneath there, and one of them just sat up there. Now, the reason I've only got two over here is because I didn't realise we were at our limit of creatures, so I'm going to have to cull a few things off at some point. Uh, so that means I've kind of wasted this round of breeding. Yeah, that's not good. So what I've been doing is I've been sort of killing off the babies that need to go. One of them actually died underneath there because I couldn't get to it in time. Um... But I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to actually show the difference that you get, the why you want to raise the babies before you cull them off, uh, before you slaughter them. So, for example, this male OV I don't need. So I'm going to slaughter it out. There we go. So I've slaughtered that. And I'm just going to use a pickaxe because that gets more meat. And as you see, I get a lot of prime meat out of it, but I don't get a lot of raw mutton. Let's grab that off a bit. There we go. So that was, let's go over here and transfer all that over. Let's type in raw. Okay, so. Remove 32 raw, sorry, 32 raw mutton and 63 raw prime meat. So, yes, that, yeah, not so much up there. Um, now, I've got actually a very high level female here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off one of these and use the same weapon to do it. Now, I should be using a Spino to do this really or, or some other good carnivore, but yeah, I want to get this done quickly. So here we go. Sort of this one. Now I've got a load of preserving sort of inventory. Let's see how much we get from this. So we don't get any prime meat from this, but as you can see, absolutely tons of raw mutton here. Wow. Lots of raw mutton. Lots and lots of raw mutton. Lots and lots and lots of raw mutton. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I've actually got to the point where my inventory is over full. I'm just going to drop that pelt because we've got tons of pelt. Okay, so let me just go and put this raw mutton as much as this I can over here. Right, that was like, what, 250 raw mutton there? Uh, let's keep... Okay, guys, so I've just finished harvesting the fully mature 112, I think it was, uh, OV over there. And I've got another 254 raw mutton out of that. So, yeah, that's, that's over 500 mutton in total from that mature one. And just to show in here, in this bulk fridge, I've still got all of that stuff that I dropped in there. So, a difference between that mature, just over 100 one, uh, well, and the baby one was the baby. I've got, what, 32? Over 500 from the uh, fully mature one. Now, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to run around and keep an eye on the ovaries that have been born. Uh, I'm going to have to cycle them out. But before I did that, I just wanted to show you the setup that I did have, just to double check that I did that earlier on. Uh, so I have, what I'm standing in front of there, this is the male. So obviously I've got two females on one side, two females on the other. And then that ginger one there is another male. So I've got two on that side and two on that side. Um, so that's the way I've got it set up. Hey, I've got another OV that's actually been born up here. That's interesting. That's very interesting because all of those drop down bar one. All of these seem to be up here. Huh, that's cool. Um, there, so like I say, you've got uh, two females, male, two females, and then you kind of start cycling over again. Another two females, male, two females. Anyway, guys, I hope you found that useful. I hope seeing the slaughter was actually helpful as well, seeing how much more you get. Uh, you can obviously kill off the babies if you need to, like I'm going to have to because I'm running low on creatures. And as you can see, I accidentally jaywhistled why I did this because I'm, you know, smooth like that. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you found that useful. I hope it helps you set up a mutton farm and obviously I hope that helps you get tames or do what you need to do. Uh, we are mostly using it to get loads of mutton for Pumba and Wilbur over there. I do need to get a nautical Timon because reasons. Um, and they're going to use those for the bosses. Um, so, yeah, hope you find that useful. Hope you have fun. Catch you all soon.